Who's been to the, to the opening, the cocktail party like we're having here tonight before? <laughs> Wonderful. You may remember, and I'll be flattered if you do, but in the past I've always had this big old book with me, right? And I've taken my MC notes and I've pasted them inside the book. And we did the whole thing like I was reading you a bedtime story. Tonight you will notice that I am without the book. Because in keeping up with the trends, with the modernification of our society, and with what's happening in the, in the literary landscape, literary landscape, I decided that this evening we will do this as an audiobook. With that said, once upon a time, in a land far, far away, now technically, if like me, you live in Bombella, you've been staying in the Lowfeld for more than 10 years, Gosh, the Bridge is very far away, okay? Where was I? Far, far away. Far, far away, there was a book festival. And at the book festival, there was a young man named David. Okay, I'm, I'm David. Please try and keep up. I, I don't want to go all Westworld with you in the third episode, okay? So young David greeted all his new friends who gathered at the festival. And they gathered from near and far. Some even as far as Bombella. They're the ones with the sandwiches. You can tell us a mile away. And young David got ready to tell you many stories. But as all the writers in the room will tell you, and ladies and gentlemen, the writers are many in the room tonight. You cannot tell a story until you've introduced the hero. Ladies and gentlemen, Chairman of the Lofeld Book Festival Organizing Committee, this is Louis van der Merwe. Sure. Evening, everybody. Thanks very much for being here this evening and coming all the way to White Rivera. Um, and welcome to the third Lofeld Book Festival. Um, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day. The weather doesn't look too great. Um, I'd like to welcome um, our two young authors, Michelle and Stacy, where are they? Michelle and Stacy. Thank you. Can you go down? You can go down. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to thank um, Amina for bringing down Ronnie. Casuals. Where's Amina? Where's Ronnie? He was, he phoned on Monday to say he wouldn't make it because he was not well. And um, uh, Judy phoned him and said, please come. And he said, okay, he'll come. <laughs> um, Sishle Shlope, who was presenting her movies tonight in the cinema, hasn't arrived yet. And it started at six o'clock. She broke down somewhere on the road, so I don't know what's happened there. And um, Fred Kamala and Nick have missed, they missed the bus this morning from Joburg. And they're coming down in their own car, but they haven't arrived yet. And Fred's meant to be speaking in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so, Ronnie, you're up next. No, I'm, jo I'm joking. I'd like to, I'm, I'm doing all the, the thanks here, because I'm not very good at speaking. Um, I'd like to thank all our sponsors, Lofeld Media, Boris. So thank you very much for all your help. Um, Lofeld Living, Nikki, thanks very much. And Porcupine Ridge for our beautiful wine tonight. Is, has Olivia arrived? Olivia J. She there? Okay, great. Um, White River Printers, seen Geraldine here, thank you so much for all your help. Lofeld Link, um, Kali, thank you very much for providing the shuttle service for, all the, for most of the authors to arrive. Uh, 
And then the various eateries have supplied meal vouchers, um, Zanna's, uh, Habana, Picasso's, Courtchat Cafe, Gum Trees, Lemon Trees, Sabi Valley Coffee, Cafe Baghdad, Magdolia, and Steve Heisen here at the barnyard. We'll be tasting some of his food a bit later. I sponsored accommodation, and you should all be here this evening. I'm not going to mention names. Um, Stonecrop Lodge, thank you so much. Oliver's, Country Lane Lodge, The Winkler, Pine Lake Inn, Greenway Woods, Higlins, Karula Hotel, Inguinyama Sports and Conference Resort, Castlebridge Hollow, Batik Hotel, and Linga Longa. Thank you all so much. Um, this book festival started over a, at a, it started as a discussion over a glass of wine um, at a friend's birthday party and developed into this. And I'd really like to thank the dream team, Judy de Villiers and Tracy Russell, with the help from Jane Balling for really pulling this together. Thank you so much. You really have done a great job this year. Thank you so much. I really don't have to do too much. I, I even get given what I have to say. You know? Most of it. And I'd like to thank Sakani and Roz. Um, where's Sakani? She's there. For, getting, for doing the marketing and getting the, um, the book festival into the social media platforms. Um, I'd like to thank um, my mother, Jeanette van der for organizing all the, the venues. Thanks so much. Last year, we cut down a bit. And then um, Judy decided to make it a bit bigger this year. She decided to add additional venue and increase the program, which um, we hopefully, which I think will appeal to a wider audience, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, the the slow felt, you never know what happens. Um, then hopefully they arrive tomorrow in this bad weather. So we very quickly put up a, a tent today um, with some extra eats and uh, entertainment and drinks up there, so hopefully people will arrive tomorrow. We put every effort into social and print media, and we hope it's going to be supported by everybody in the low field. We do have an amazing lineup of authors here that this, this year. Okay, this is a bit of housekeeping. There are, um, in the author's goodie bags, um, there are meal vouchers. Oh, they aren't, in the, they aren't there yet. Yeah. You, you, the authors and facilitators will be fed, so um, you can get your meal vouchers tomorrow from Tracy or Judy. Um, and inside there's a map of Casterbridge and where you're going to be, where your event is going to be held. And if you can please be there a little bit earlier, just to see where it is. There's an author's chill zone um, with tea, coffee, and eats, biscuits, and things. Outside, on the veranda of the barnyard theatre. Exclusive books have a pop-up shop. Um, it is near the Courtyard Cafe, which is um, on the main drag of Casterbridge at the very end. Um, lanyards, these things, all the authors and facilitators have these, and this gives you free access into all the events, so please go and support your, your fellow authors, just in case none of the Lofelders get out of bed tomorrow, please. Um, and and it also gives the authors and the facilitators access to um, the barnyard tomorrow night for a dinner. And we have John, Johnny and the Latin Blues Express tomorrow night, which should be good fun. And we would hopefully other people arrive tomorrow night to mingle with, the, with all of you. Okay, I think I've come to the end of my speech. <laughs> 
Thank you all very, very much again for coming this evening. Um, and all of you for coming to join us at the festival. And we wish you well, and we hope we have a fantastic time. Thank you so much. Marvellous. Thank you, Squire. Uh, I, I love the author's chill area without bourbon. It's a guarantee that Hunter S. Thompson is not on the lineup this year. Okay. Uh, as for the meal vouchers in the goodie bags, there are banting vouchers in there. No, not really. The other thing I was happy to see was that the font on Louis' speech is the same as mine. Going with the technological thing, I was going to put my whole thing on my Kindle, but I've now reached the stage where every time I press the increase font but a size button, I get an SMS from my optometrist, so that's also not working anymore. I do want to introduce you to our first speaker this evening. Not too much of a story to tell. It's a fascinating story. But not much of a story to tell. It's a lady of many talents, and she's a good friend of the Lowfelt Book Festival. And I was happy to see the, the, the influx of TLAs into Mpumalanga this weekend. Uh, TLA, obviously short for a three-lettered acronym. Uh, because we used to have the greatest train race, and that's suddenly being rebranded as the GTR. We used to have the Lowfelt Book Festival, and I see this year they're starting themselves as the LBF. Uh, but I think we stick with the same hashtag from last year if you go into social media, right? Hashtag bookmarks are for quitters. So when you go into social media, remember that. But this lady is indeed a very good friend of the Lowfelt uh, Book Festival because her movie, a little something you may have uh, come across, called Happiness is a Four-Letter Word, was chosen as the movie for the very first Lowfelt Book Festival. Now, once you've hurdled that little idea of having a movie chosen for a book festival... We're back on the same page again. The film was released in 2016, and it was indeed an adaptation of her debut novel, which was released in 2010, and won, among rather a lot else, um, the best first book category, Africa Region, in the Commonwealth Writers' Prize in 2011. And in the same year, also 2011, uh, she won the MNET Literary Award in the film category. She also writes short stories, contributes to magazines and other literature platforms. She's, as a matter of fact, one of the very few people who can be both subtle and eloquent on Twitter. <laughs> Morning. She supports various initiatives to promote literacy amongst young people, including the Funza Literary Trust. Ladies and gentlemen, make an amazing amount of noise and get lots of paper cuts as you welcome on stage with me no, Sizwe, Cynthia, Jele. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Okay. So, I was told that I just have to say a few words, sort of warming up the stage for Mr. Fred Kumalo. And so my speech is really just that, to warm up the, the stage for him. Um, I'm more than a friend of the Lofed Book Festival. I'm a patron, the official ambassador. They don't know it yet, but now they do. <laughs> um, and the reason I say that is because um, I come from Pumalanga. I come from the Lofeld, yes. Um, I grew up in a border town called Komati Port. Uh, some of you who have been to Mozambique, you would go past um, Komati Port in a village. Okay, township, but it's really a village when you've been to other townships. Um, called Kamakregeza. So that's where I grew up. Um, then I went to school um, in KZN. But for me, Mpumalanga will always be home. I don't live here anymore. My mother just relocated back to KZN, but, you know, Bumalanga is always going to be home for me. So I am the daughter of this province, and that's why I can claim to be the official patron of the Lofer Book Festival. <laughs> and we've been waiting for a festival like this um, for many, many years. And thank you to Louis and to everyone and Judy and, ev and the team and Tracy for putting it together, because I think for us it's important um, that we become available to especially young people who are looking for role models that look like me. When I grew up, I didn't even know that I could become a writer. 
I just found it um, in my old age. And that's why I published at a very old age. But for now, you know, we can go to, we can go to schools, we can, on social media, start to interact with young people to say, hey, you can actually do this. Um, it doesn't pay, you're gonna live a very poor life. Maybe, we're changing that and I'm gonna say why. Um, but it's such a fulfilling, um, it's such a fulfilling thing if, if, if that's what you wanna do, if that's how you want to express, if words are the best way to express yourself. Because some of us write because we think things, a lot of things, but we find it easier to say it in words. Um, so yes, last time I was here, um, I was very surprised when um, they showed my movie, Happiness is a Four Letter Word. Um, and I was, you know, very, very happy and excited because um, it just allowed other people it, it, that had not seen it to come and, and, and see it. And for us to talk about, um, you know, that such things are possible. So I'm very happy um, for that. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I love that idea of introducing film in a book festival, you know, because art is art. And the more we can cross pollinate and start to talk amongst the different genres, the different platforms, I think it opens up a whole lot of readers, a whole lot of audiences for us. So if we support Sisha's um, film, she supports our book, and then, you know, that way we cross-pollinate, and we can talk to a much broader audience. Because building readership and building people who appreciate and love art in whichever form is our biggest job. So our job doesn't end with just writing that book and getting it published and going on a TV show. It's really to grow the reader base in, in this country, and it's something that I'm very passionate about, especially young people. So one of the things that I appreciate about this festival, it's the outreach program. And I mean, just shout out to um, Dudu and Jane and the young ones um, who, have, um, who have been going out to school and other authors who have been going out to school yesterday and today and just talking to children about writing. So we never had those opportunities. Nobody ever came to our schools to tell us that, you know, you can do this. So, so big up really to the team that has um, put the community, the school outreach program um, into, into this bigger program. Because some of them cannot come here for a whole lot of reason, but it feels like they are part of this festival and that's important. It may, be, it may look like a small step, but actually it makes such a difference in a greater scheme of things. So really big up to that. We love festival. I love writers' festival. I like book festivals. I love literary um, events because it allows me to come and listen and engage other writers, and to that way to also grow my art. Um, I love them also because we just learn from each other. Apart from meeting our readers and um, and, and 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 talking about our work with our readers and engaging at that level, it just really is a space for us to learn from each other. Um, for example, today when we're in a shuttle coming here, I was with two authors, and as it happens, when, two or, when three or more authors are together, the first thing that we talk about is, how many of your books have been printed? <laughs> how many have you sold? <laughs> how is that going? And um, we all had this discussion, this discussion, and I think in the end, we all dis decided that for us to make a living out of writing, we each need to sell 50,000 copies. Yes, 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 yes. We did the math, you can also do your math. But when you think of the print run, an average print run, that it's between 1,500 and 2,000, so we're nowhere near. We are nowhere near that. So really, really growing a culture, cultivating a culture of reading, it's such a critical part of, our, of what we have to do. And as being here, I'd like to think that that is um, one, one way of doing that. Um, okay, I've spoken about the um, yeah, literature amongst children. All right, so I'm um, taking part in the program. I, I have a session um, tomorrow afternoon. Of course, another reason why we come here is to support each other. So I'll be in 
as, as many panels as I can, just in the audience listening. Um, but I also have my panel at 4, at 4 p.m. to discuss my new book. It's a blue book called The Ones With Purpose. And I'll be um, yeah, looking forward to have a discussion. I can't tell you more. You have to come tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to having a discussion um, tomorrow. So to everyone who's taking part in the festival, all the best for tomorrow. Let's have fun. Let's talk. Let's eat. Let's drink. I don't drink wine. I, I'm on a 100-day sabbatical. But let's drink water for some of us. And um, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, friend of the Lofeld Book Festival, patron of the Lofeld Book Festival, official ambassador of the Lofeld Book Festival. She doesn't write because she wants to, she writes because she has to. Make some noise for Narcisse Wise Cynthia Jolly! Okay, that's it. Where's the boxing tournament? Sort of. <laughs> Okay, we are still hoping that Fred's going to join us here this evening. If not, we are going to, uh, we're going to jump into, uh, into a bit of poetry. And uh, I, I have to admit that when it comes to poetry, I'm, I'm pretty much out of my depth, right? There's, there's kind of one poem that's longer than five lines that I like, and that's that one about the snowy stuff and many miles to go thing that, that Beloved got me into. Uh, apart from that, I'm a, I'm a blokish kind of chap, right? I'm into limericks. Uh, and I'm willing to share with you this evening, not a limerick, it's okay, uh, but the fact that there are three kinds of limericks. I don't know if you knew this. But there are limericks that you can tell to ladies, but not to clergymen. Then there are limericks that you can tell to clergymen, but not to ladies. And then, my friends, there are limericks. This is an absolutely marvelous poetry platform. And I want to tell you a little bit more about it. They've given it to me, and it's you know the same font size that Barack Obama uses. I, I wear that as a badge of honor. It is a platform for young, old, and upcoming musicians, artists, and poets to showcase their creativity. Their platform provides exposure for artists to real-life and digital audiences with an insight into the creative field. This happens in places and events such as the Kasambo Jam Session. Hello, Carol! Which is where their organization found its feet. And it's an absolutely marvelous platform and it's launching so much talent through Mpomalanga. It's scary. They cater for many people, including writers, singers, photographers, inspirational speakers, and promoters. Uh, they provide a platform for the artist. They provide mentorship with nurturing and helping people performing their work. Words in their mouths is the biggest poetry, words in my mouth, sorry, is the biggest poetry slam organization in Mpomalanga with a host of alumni, including performers such as Koleka Potuma, Joseph Alexander Brown, Vusisiwe Meshlangu, and Tabisu Vili. Words in my mouth has traveled to uh, Eswatini, gaining international status and also performing at uh, Word and Sound Poetry, Lang uh, poetry League in Johannesburg. They have recently received a special invitation to perform at the Naked Word Festival. And with that said, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome some poets on, uh, on stage to share with us their artistry and craft. And I ask you to make some noise. This is Menzim Konsa. And here's Mary Mann. Keep it going, keep it going. Now we go all the way up the steps. And Squire, the microphone is yours. Evening, everyone. So, uh, in words in my mouth, we have this thing. It's called Writers in Session. So in Writers in Session, it's like the more mature side of the slam. So with that being said, I'll just get straight into it uh, with a poem I call Ode to Mother. Over the telephone, my mother's mouth sounds like the radio fading into the right frequency. Her voice peaks at every question mark. 
At this point, I'm wondering if she's asking whether I've eaten, took out the meat, and closed all the windows. She forgets to ask if I am okay. My grandmother and my mother's tongues are sharp, which is a strange thing to inherit when yours is sharp in silence. My mouth, the void of my words, the emptiness answers in the shape of inhale. This is the first lesson I teach on death, learning to hold your breath to infinity. Being patient with myself is the last thing I can do when tomorrow could be my last exhale. So I build a casket made from blunt things I could never say like, I love myself. I do deserve you. I am breathing. They are listening. My mother asks the right question about my body, but often to forgets to ask if the casket is still open. Her tone, the same ultimatum that made my father stay, and I breathe at the semicolon. So when my mother asks, how's an aspirate? I tell her, one, in the time of war, dead bodies are moved into the light in an attempt to resuscitate them. Two, the windows are always open. They remind me to breathe. Three, communities gather the most in the time of death. So when two or more are gathered in my name, let this poem be obituary. The full stop, my funeral. So when she hangs up, the monotone beep sounds like. Good evening, everyone. My name is Noah Piri. I am a young artist and writer. I would like the sound guys. Cool. I can feel myself dying. Feel each breath leave. Again, I don't want to die here. In the chasm of your lips amongst the dead, laying in eternal slumber, this is a ghost town. Burned down when the heat wave of your breath brought this city to waste. Tell me, what anthems were buried here? Beneath the braille of smoldered skin like dry desert sand, survival found in the oasis of your kiss. This land is a graveyard. Of lovers scorched by the sun and I am a lone traveler who has found refuge in this rubble in Nagasaki run by power plants in time I will die by the radiation left by your nuclear language tell me what is in your core that explosions run through your pulse erupting through your skin unearthing your nature what is in your breath atom bomb tongue poison lingering in your scent fumes everywhere I can feel my lungs bleeding blood coughing throat smeared in tar I am inhaling your smoke tell me how did the ones before me live how did the ones before me live how did the ones before me live suffocating citizens they learn to adapt to fire show me your phoenix wings fire sprite my heart made of charcoal fingertips smeared in ashes now god what apocalypse are you where can i find a safe place i don't want to die here i will follow you through whispers, through volcanoes, do your eyes still flood canyons at night? Lightning becoming the eye of your meteor shower, rain of fire. I am struggling to sail through these rough waters, lighthouse soul. Let me harbor on your castaway cheeks, live off you. I swear we have been on this island before. My back has memories of how you loved me, nails sinking in. Tear me apart if this is what it is to love you. Strike me down with your hand grenades I would die a thousand deaths Just to scale your kingdom Just to write your name one more time Thank you When people ask how I'm doing I answer in the shape of exhale. 
a sigh of relief that I did not die. I too slit my wrists. I do not drink the blood, but I do this in remembrance of me. Less understands the grief. Stop breaking the wings of your cross. We all have to die for something, even if it means inking your sins. This poem has seen you naked. Stop dressing up in lies. Many ears have been cut off. Replace it with the truth. You have written poems in the absence of your mind. Your pen has moved across the face of this page. It is dipped in bloody hands and nothing is good. These hands have died with ink. I have mourned the death of these poems. My breath is still being written. I am a conversation. I keep breathing when no one is listening. Um, this poem is very serious that I'm going to recite. Well, I think it's serious. I don't know. Um, trigger warning it has a lot. It kind of has a very brute and strong beginning. Um, if ever, anyone feels like they could be offended um, to, po to graphic imagery, um, then now would be like a safe time to just leave. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the motherland, where mothers die with their thighs open as though their bodies were open coffins stuffed with dead children that smell of unprotected sex and forced entry. Yes, welcome to the motherland, where wombs are caskets for every unborn father and our ancestors. Shed tears that fill the rivers that tear this land apart. Yes, welcome to the motherland. You had expectations of rich soils, vast lands, and harsh African suntans, but here... Our sons swallow condoms to measure their manhood. Our young boys roam these streets with ambitionless vision, blinded by the dark-skinned women they prey upon. This is secret of the township. This is not your mother's home. A dinner table of absent fathers creates chasms in our gene pools. No wonder why they wear ripped jeans, bum short, short skirts, speaking as though they have taught their mothers how to give birth. This history continues to preach like church. Hell holds where village daughters are pregnant with the children of the pastors. Crucifix, they tie their umbilical cords around the necks of their priests, hoping to create a connection with God. But this generation has given birth to barren daughters. His black ovaries turned to charcoal, used as firewood to burn our heritage fires that rival the sub-Saharan sun. I will not run. I will not run. I will not run. I will let these flames smolder my skin until I am dark enough to be heard. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, trigger warning. Uh, this poem, I don't have a title, but it's around toxic masculinity. My mother says, a man is built by the size of his pride. The girl leaves. The girl says she doesn't love me after looking at the size of my penis. Its size does not equate to the cockiness. You are the joke between short and infertile, giving birth to blanks. After your masculinity is short-shamed for not going to the mountain and coming too quick, the girl leaves you with your, wounds, with your wounds after tending to hers. This is the first time you realize you can't satisfy a woman. Your grandmother with your calls, your mother with your grades, your woman with your attention. I think this is going to be my last poem, and then I will leave the stage for other people, for other children to flourish. Um, this is a love poem, nothing serious. Um, yeah, it's about music. She wore her breast as valve, chest as song, describe her body as though it were a saxophone. Live in the curve of her spine, under your music, black mouthpiece, the valves on your body, the arch in your back, you had golden skin. 
A cleared silhouette from all the lights in the room, a burst of kaleidoscope sound grazing on the tip of a tongue. These theater echoes, smell and taste of steaming hot Sunday morning R&B soul. Your body like breakfast, I am left half full, unsatisfied, wanting more of you. Your body is a perfect symphony like jazz. How you have done this. Silence has made noise. A conjunction of mute whispers to stream living waters within her listeners. An oasis of hymns, sounds from her core, cheeky. Yet soft, how I wish to play her. Lay your mouthpiece on me. How I wish to be played by her. How I wish to be your mouthpiece. And as easily slide off the sweet sulk of your soft lips and feel the temperature of your breath. I am oxygen craved. Chasing the breath of God, I have swallowed him, trapped him in the dungeon of my stomach where he now beats drums to all the voices I've ingested. Look how these hollows lift the sky for you. They have pushed up the ozone layer waiting to become another key trapped in your jazz session. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is Words in My Mouth, Poetry Slam. Ish. Gentlemen, listen, in my, in my uh, rapidly dwindling and disastrously underpaid radio career, I've always exhorted my colleagues to talk hard. That was talking hard. That was speaking with soul. Gentlemen, thank you. Fish. The other thing that caught me was on the front of the one gentleman's beanie. It said less than a stanza, and I thought, I didn't know this thing was sponsored by Nissan. Just before, I did promise to tell you a couple of stories. Okay, and just before we, we, we break for, for curry and rice, I thought I would, I would tell you two stories, if I may. One of them started 5 a.m. in the morning. Imagine the scene. English Channel. Dense fog. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. It's the 21st of February, 1917. It's about 10 nautical miles. That's about 19 kilometers, if you've never figured out how to convert that. I haven't. Uh, just south of, of St. Catherine's Point, it's on the Isle of Man. The Royal Mail Steam Packet Company's cargo ship by the name of the Darrow accidentally comes out of the darkness, out of the fog, and it accidentally rams the starboard quarter of the SS Mendy, breaching the starboard hull and causing the Mendy to sink. Now, the Mendy was a British passenger uh, steamship. It was built in 1905 and was in use as a troop ship at the time. It was carrying 823 men of the 5th Battalion of the South African Native Labor Corps to go and serve in France towards the end of the First World War. In that accident, 616 South Africans and all 30 of the British crew would die. Now let's fast forward several years, as we can do when we're telling stories. And that incident would become the inspiration for the debut novel of the person who's joining us at the book festival at 12.30 tomorrow. Let me tell you another story. This one happened on the 18th of August. That's tomorrow, yeah? The 18th of August, 1969, when a young man watches another young man by the name of James Marshall Hendricks, known to the world and a couple of close friends as Jimmy, do some impossible things on an electric guitar. Inspired and enthused, he decides that if Jimmy can do that on a guitar, I can do that on a trumpet. And on the 19th of August, 1996, uh, 1969, one Miles Davis walks into Studio B at Columbia Records, and in the space of three days, records one of the landmark albums in the wonderful world of jazz. A little something called Bitches Brew. Now, I don't know if that's got anything to do with our friend 12.30 Tomorrow's second novel. I just like the story, so I thought I'd share. <laughs> However, that second novel called Bitches Brew uh, went on to win the 2006 European Union Literary Award. And it was followed by our author friend's third novel, which is a thing called Seven Steps to Heaven. His memoir, entitled Touch My Blood, was shortlisted for the Alan Payton Prize for nonfiction in 2007. 
It's always cool when somebody's memoirs gets qualified for nonfiction. Eh? He also wrote something called Hashtag Zuptas Must Fall and Other Rants that was published in 2016. His short fiction has appeared in various anthologies, literary journals, and magazines. He holds a master's degree in creative writing from the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, where he currently resides. And we're very sorry about that. I mean, him living in Joburg, not having the master's degree, that's pretty cool. Ladies and gentlemen, up on your Lowfeld Book Festival tomorrow at afternoon at 12.30 is going to be the incomparable Fred Kumalo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm waiting for a nod from the back. It's like, you know, are we going to... Are we going to get Deus Ex Machina? Is he here? He is? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Can we bring Fred Kumalo on stage then? I don't see anybody running. What, 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 did he get scared of by the introduction or something? Not going to happen. But we're looking forward to having him on the, uh, on the program at, uh, at 12.30 tomorrow. Ladies and gents, as mentioned, there's some uh, of the glorious barnyard food outside, a lovely curry and rice. Uh, the temperature is chilling down a bit. And I thought to get us, uh, you know, to set us up for the meal properly, I believe we have Archbishop Makoba, who is the uh, Anglican Archbishop from, uh, from Cape Town. He's here this evening. We're going to ask him to come up and say grace for us. You know, if you're going to say grace, you might as well get an archbishop to do it, might you not? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Archbishop Makoba joining us up on stage. Thank you ever so much. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for friends. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you that we could gather here and share a meal together. We thank you for your abundant providence. We ask you to bless those that have prepared this meal for us. Make us ever mindful of the needs of those that do not have at this time and to be responsive to their needs. For your name's sake, amen. Wonderful. And he drops it. Nobody told him it was going to happen, right? That was complete freestyle, total improv. Way impressive. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your kind attention here this evening. I trust you can have an absolutely stunning time with us. As mentioned, the curry and rice being served outside. There's some more of that wonderful, uh, is it Dimasdal um, wine outside? Porcupine Ridge, sorry, Porcupine Ridge wine outside. Do enjoy, have an absolutely stunning book festival, and please remember the hashtag, bookmarks are for quitters. Have a good evening. <laughs>